Hello, my lovely friend. Welcome back to my channel. For those that are new here, my name is Mel and I am a medium and an energy healer. I love to create videos about spirituality and if that is something that you're interested in, remember to subscribe to the channel. Today's video is about spirit guides. I have received several questions about how to communicate with them and how to know when they are trying to talk to you. So this video is going to be all about spirit guide communication. Stay tuned. Our spirit guides communicate with us in so many different ways. So the ways that I'm going to explain in this video are typical ways that they will use to communicate with you, but they're not the only way. Your spirit guide and you have your very own unique relationship and your very own unique bond. So how they communicate with you might be different than how they communicate with me or your best friend, your mom, your neighbor. So what I do suggest first and foremost is to find that bond and that relationship for yourself and find how they communicate with you for yourself. But you can start with some of these basic symbols and signs and work your way into something that works and feels best to you. Now, what do I mean by that? You can ask your spirit guide to communicate with you however you like. So one of the examples I'm going to give is with hummingbirds. I have hummingbirds around my house constantly, and I know that these are signs from one of my spirit guides. Now, we all have different ones throughout our lives, and I do know that the hummingbirds are from one specific guide. If hummingbirds are something that makes you feel very comfortable, very alive, very vibrant, you can say, I want to know you're around by seeing hummingbirds, okay? So you can form that relationship, that bond, those signs and that symbols with your guide yourself. Something that feels really good to you and something that when you see it or you hear it, you know and you feel really good. So the hummingbirds are actually something I did ask my guide to show me when this person is around. So some of the signs and symbols and ways that you can know that your spirit guide is communicating with you is through feathers. I do have a spirit guide, my mediumship spirit guide, who shows me feathers to let me know that they are around. I actually had one of my friends make this for me, and he didn't even know that this was a sign from my mediumship guide. He just felt called to make this, and the minute I saw it, I knew I wanted it. So you can receive signs and symbols such as a feather through a photo through an actual feather, maybe you see a feather in your mind. It doesn't have to be a physical, actual feather in your hand. It can be in a photograph. It can be in your mind. It can be on the ground. It can be in a drawing. So don't limit yourself to only an actual physical item. It can be anything. Another way that they communicate with you is through numbers. So when you see 111 or 222, 333, these are also known as angel numbers, but my spirit guides communicate with me using those numbers, especially 1111. This is a huge sign for me that one of my spirit guides is communicating with me. Another one is birds. This photo also has birds on it, so you can see birds. I've had a lot of clients have their spirit guide come through telling me that blue jays are a sign from them. So it can be any different kind of bird. I've had ravens come through for one of my friends. I've had robins come through for another client. So any kind of bird can also be a sign from your spirit guide that they're trying to talk to you or give you some messages. Something else that I have found to be a great way that spirit guides communicate with you is through music. And so sometimes I'm in a mood or I'm not feeling good and I'll turn my radio on and a special song will come on that will have meaning to me or a message from them will be within the song itself. So listening to music is another great way for your spirit guides to communicate with you. Um, when my father passed away, and I know that he's one of my guides now that he's on the other side, I remember going into a restaurant, it's called Cafe Rio here where I live, and the minute I walked inside, a Carrie, I'm getting the chills right now, a Carrie Underwood song came on, it's called I Will See You Again. And I knew that this was from my dad. I knew that the second I walked into this restaurant and heard this song, now this was 
I would say a week after he had been killed, not very long at all. And this was how he communicated with me. This is how he showed me that he is still with me and leading me and guiding me. So music is a great way to connect with your spirit guides. You just have to pay attention to the lyrics and see what the message is from them. Okay, so now that we've talked about a few ways that they show you that they're around and they give you signs and symbols, please again remember that it's not limited to just this. It can be anything that they use to communicate with you. So something personal between you and them. It could be something I haven't listed. So keep your mind and your heart open and look for signs and symbols from them. But what you can do to start building a relationship with your spirit guide is setting your intention. Your intention in the spirit world and even in this physical earthly world is everything. What you set your mind to, what intentions you put out there, that's what you attract to you. So if you set the intention, I want to connect with my spirit guide, that starts to get things going and you will be connected with them. Something I want to say first and foremost is that you do need to have a lot of patience. I receive a lot of comments and a lot of emails saying that I have put out the message and nothing happens and they're not connecting and I don't see them and I don't feel them and I'm feeling alone and lost. I want you to know that it doesn't happen all the time, but all the time they are there. And by that I mean, if you're not seeing them, you're not feeling them, you're not getting a bond, you don't have any energy around you, you're not seeing signs and symbols, that doesn't mean that they're not with you. They are with you 100% of the time. It's just that sometimes our mind and our ego, our body gets in the way of the signs and the symbols. So what I like to say to my clients that, especially ones that book the spirit guide reading with me, is to have patience, but to have an open heart and an open mind. Start writing down things that are happening to you, numbers that you're continually seeing. What is happening in your mind, in your body, in your surroundings? when you see this number, when you see this feather, when you see the bird, what is happening? What are you thinking? What's going on? These, these are going to lead you to clues as to what they're trying to communicate with you. And it's going to help you understand that they're always around you. Something else that I have come to learn through this entire journey is that your spirit guide meets you where you're at and they meet you where you can understand. And by that, I mean, I remember asking and asking and asking for my spirit guide to come through when I first started this journey years ago. And I kept asking and kept meditating and kept asking and kept praying and nothing would happen. And then finally one day when I wasn't, I need it, I need it, I need it, I need it, I let it go. I completely forgot about it. I saw this woman in jeans in my mind and I thought, jeans there's no way a spirit guide in heaven in with god is going to be wearing jeans what the heck and sure enough i saw her again and then i saw her again and i want to preface it took me months and months to be able to see her and feel her but i knew she was always around i just knew it in my bones i knew it in my body but she appeared to me wearing jeans and after i started building a relationship and even after all of the spirit guide readings i have done for my clients i have learned that your spirit guides meet you where you're at in your journey if you see a spirit guide with huge angel wings and huge bright white light it might not be something that your mind can understand and comprehend. But when I saw her in jeans, it's like I felt a connection to this person. Now, at first I was like, there's no way that's a spirit guide. But my mind built a connection to this person and them wearing jeans was something that made sense to my mind. Now, your mind could make sense of the huge feathers and the huge light. But for others, a lot of my clients I have read for I even have one who came through in, in a suit, right? It's what our mind can perceive and what our mind can connect to. So be very patient with yourself. Again, for me, it took months and months of asking before something started to happen. So go easy on yourself. The first thing to do is set that intention that you want to connect. 
Something else that you can do to connect to a spirit guide is called automatic writing. So you would sit down with a notebook and just start writing again, using your intention to connect to your spirit guide, but just start writing everything that comes to your mind, everything that you're feeling. Do you feel a female? Do you feel a male with you? What's the message? What are you hearing? What are you seeing? What are you feeling around your body? Do this often to connect with your spirit guide and you're gonna be amazed at the messages that come through and the guidance that you are receiving. Now, automatic writing is a great way to connect to them because it builds a rapport between the two of you and it also establishes your psychic abilities too because you're connecting with them telepathically. So automatic writing does a lot of good for your spiritual practice and to connect with a spirit guide. Something I like to do to connect to my spirit guide too is to just talk to them. Okay, so you've probably watched a few videos back where I said I'm at work typing and I'm my spirit guide will say something and I'm like, yeah, uh-uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm at work. Like I just talk to my spirit guide like they're right here, which they are. Spirit is omnipresent, which means that they are everywhere and anywhere at the same time. So you can talk to them in your head. No, don't do it out loud, people are gonna, what? like they did for me at work, but you can talk to them in your head all day, every day. Talk to them about things and start to listen and feel and look for them answering you back. You might hear them in your mind. It's gonna be in your own voice for a majority of you, but that is them answering you. You might feel a sensation. You might see something in your mind. You might be driving down the street and there might be a billboard with an answer to a question that you have asked. Communicating con and connecting to your spirit guide is as easy as talking to them saying what you want to say to them, talking to them even if you don't feel or see them, but just knowing in your heart that they are around you. Building that communication and that bond through talking to them through your heart is a huge way to connect and establish a really strong connection to them. Of course, another really great way to connect is through meditation, but I do get a lot of emails from clients and from you here on YouTube telling me that meditation is just not your thing, which I completely understand. There's a lot of people that don't like it or it just doesn't feel right to them and that's totally okay. But if you can take five to 10 minutes to just quiet your mind with the intention again to connect to your spirit guide meditation is going to bring a huge connection to you with your spirit guide because your mind is completely focused on them your body is relaxed you're not worrying about what bill you have to pay oh the daycare the dishes you're sitting in meditation with a quiet mind focused on connecting to your spirit guide, focused on feeling them and seeing them and getting their guidance and knowing that they're around you. Meditation is a really great way to connect to your spirit guide. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't like meditation, just try it for five to 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be some hour long production, just something to get your mind open to connect to them, but also closed off from thoughts, get your body relaxed and establish that connection. Five to 10 minutes is perfect. So as I said at the beginning of this video, there are so many different ways to connect, so many different ways to receive messages and guidance from your spirit guide that I could never possibly cover them in a video. But what I talked about here are some really great ways to get started. But the best thing you can do is find your own connection, your own guidance, your own ways of communicating with them. If there's something that's special to you, ask them to use that to communicate with you. Ask them to show you something special so that you know that they are around you. Something that you can do as well that I have tried and it's amazing when it happens and comes through is ask for something something that's not typically seen. So like pink flamingos, a flamingo, a frog, something that's not typically seen or like if you ask for a feather, there's feathers in everything. If you ask for angel wings, there's angel wings in everything, right? Ask for something off the wall, like a frog or a pink flamingo, right? And your spirit guides will show that to you. Keep your heart open. It could be a sticker. It could be an image in your mind. It could be on a billboard. Somebody could say the word frog. Somebody could say the word pink flamingo. 
that's your spirit guide communicating with you. So play that game with them. Ask them to show you something fun, something off the wall. And when you see it, you're just gonna be so excited. I love doing this with my guides as well. It's another great way to stay connected and another great way to build that energy between the two of you. So please leave any comments down below if you have any other questions about connecting to your guide or any other great ways that you have used, leave those in the comments so that we can learn and grow together and so others can try those as well. Thank you as always for tuning in and for supporting me on this channel and I'll see you in the next video, my lovely friend.